Tonight on Q2, a forced closure. I am now closed. Um, the health department ordered me to close. As water issues continue in Hysham, the town's only restaurant now being instructed to shut down. Plus a late night shock. It's also quite sad. I know they took um, a lot of pride in building um, the new library. A drunk driver crashes through the library doors, leading to more than $100,000 in damages. And on the big screen. Ready to just do something really cool and, and something that no other school but Billing Central offers. Billing Central students take their film projects to the Babcock. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight, the latest on the water issues plaguing Hysham. But now the trouble is stretching to the town's only restaurant, shutting it down. It's an ongoing problem now for some six months. As our Haley Monica reports, frustrations are leading to a disagreement between the owner and the mayor. This is the only bar and restaurant in the town of Hysham, but it was forced to close recently after the do not consume water order was issued for the town and is still in effect one week later. After nearly three years of feeding Hysham, BJ Shokoff never would have anticipated this. It's my livelihood. It's being taken away by a situation that is out of my control. In a matter of a week, Shokoff's dream of running the BW Grill and Bar is in limbo after the county health department issued a closure because of the unsafe water conditions plaguing all of Hysham. I've worked hard for this. If I walk away from this, it's probably 200 grand that I walk away from. Shokoff doesn't blame the health department, but if he cannot find another means of clean water, he will need to remain closed until the water supply becomes clean again. When I had the health inspector ask me, well, can we just use paper plates? And I said, well, yeah, we can, but I still have cutting boards and I still have, you know, meal prep. What he's most frustrated about is that there's no clear timeline as to when Hysham's water problems, now in their fifth month, will finally get fixed. At one point, the Department of Environmental Quality had a 90-day plan, but then a new problem emerged and the water plant lost its filtration treatment. Since I got no answers back, we had to go to other sources and they're saying weeks and months. We asked Hysham's mayor, Larry Fink, to provide some clarity about the status of the problem, but he declined our interview. Last week, he told MTN the town was waiting on parts. There's always something in the chain that can't be delivered right at the moment. So hopefully that won't happen, but the way our luck goes, it will. I don't feel it is in my control to ask the town to step up and help me out because it doesn't feel like they're behind me. With an unclear future, Shokoff now just has to wait for answers and hope his dream can remain a reality. I can carry this business two months I can't carry it through the summer, and I will probably lose it. In Hysham, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Tonight, one entrance of the Billings Library remains boarded up, blocked off after a late night crash into this, its doors that you can see right there. It was a presumed drunk driver who hit it. Luckily, no one was injured, but now the library faces a hefty price tag in order to repair this. And as our Alina Howder found out, this crash is shining a light on a much bigger issue. A 28 year old man managed to drive up this curb between these two beams and into the north entrance of the Billings Public Library. The man was drunk and uninsured, meaning it's up to the library to cover the estimated cost of 100 to $150,000 to fix it. Yeah. It was an unfortunate surprise that no one saw coming. I wouldn't expect somebody to be able to hit a building, especially on a main road like this. Restoration work is now underway to fix these shattered doors. But somehow, some way, the suspected drunk driver who caused more than $100,000 in structural damage backed away and took off. The vehicle stopped, but then the driver tried to flee on foot. Uh, officers caught him. Uh, he he was injured from the crash, so he had to, you know, they had to seek medical medical attention. That van still sits here outside a home in the 200 block of Avenue D. The suspect was treated for his injuries and then processed for DUI, but that's just the start of his problems. At this time, been charged with 
No insurance. No insurance, which means this mess is now the city's responsibility. The city does have some reserves for incidents like this just in case, but the fact is that our insurance deductible is high enough that we just think that it won't reach that point, so it will come at full cost to the city. And this incident is highlighting a bigger billings problem. Uninsured drivers is a big problem. Lieutenant Lennox says drivers don't insure for various reasons. Some can't because of their driving record. Others simply don't want to pay for expensive insurance. It's a mandatory site for us. And those insurance fines grow with each citation. Then there are points on driver's licenses which can lead to a suspension. Lennox says uninsured drivers get caught in a cycle, which means his officers often see the same faces. Then if you don't have a driver's license, can you get to work? Can you afford to buy insurance, right? It's this whole, it's a cycle. Thankfully, no one but the driver was injured here. And it was business as usual Wednesday at the library. But patrons like Kristen feel the library's loss. For somebody to to hit it and destroy something that's very important to a lot of people, it's, it's quite sad. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Let's take a look at our high resolution forecast to get an idea where the showers, thunderstorms will start to come together as we make it through the evening hours. Things are going to become more active for you through northern Wyoming, back into the mountain foothills, the potential for some snow showers. Let's take this through time and you can see how widespread some heavier rain will become. Some potential for some thunderstorms with pockets of heavy rain, even some hail possible in southeastern Montana. Some gusty winds to go along with that as well. Now here we are on Thursday. We'll put Push it ahead up into Friday and we'll see a lot of those showers. Looks like they're going to develop into northeastern Montana a bit more than we originally anticipated. Plus the potential for some flooding all across the eastern plains. More on the forecast details coming up. A wrongful death lawsuit is now filed after a Belgrade woman and another man died after eating at a popular Bozeman restaurant, Dave Sushi. Health officials in the case say that it was a foodborne illness outbreak. And the family of Donna Ventura says the 64-year-old became sick within an hour. She was rushed to the hospital but went into cardiac arrest. In all, two people died and 30 others fell ill after eating at the restaurant in late March and early April. Dave's believes that it was morel mushrooms served in a special that might be responsible. And the family is looking now to be compensated. Meanwhile, the owner of Dave's Sushi, Aaron Parker, says he plans to reopen after the health department's investigation is final. Well, Montana's drug treatment courts are being used as a national model to get people clean, sober and healthy. But it could have all gone away as federal funds for eight of them in our state we're about to end. As MTN's Jackie Coffin explains, the governor says he's got a permanent solution and it's a good thing because Montanans really need it. The phrase used over and over again to describe drug treatment courts is life changing. And as Montana is once again nationally recognized for this life changing work, Governor Greg Gianforte says these courts can also expect a boost of funding for treatment courts in the state of Montana. Montana treatment courts are being used as a national model and in Billings Wednesday, the National Center for DWI Courts awarded these courts with a special certification, allowing Montana courts to train other treatment courts across the country and other teams around the country who want to learn how we operate and learn best practices, come and visit Montana, either virtually or in person. Judge Mary Jane Nicely says there are now 40 treatment courts across the state, and each is unique. Some specialize in Indian child welfare and family treatment. Others, like the courts Nicely presides over, are focused on DUI cases and veteran substance abuse. The cohesiveness of the multidisciplines the, and the the stakeholders have come together to make this court the model court. Eight of those 40 courts are about to lose federal funding, but Governor Greg Gianforte's latest budget will cover that funding gap and keep those courts operational. That $1.2 million comes from a settlement with a major opioid manufacturer after the state of Montana sued for damages over the opioid crisis. Treatment courts work. This is an alternative sentencing mechanism that helps people trapped in addiction get healthy and become productive members of society. Uh, and it costs a fraction of what a jail cell costs. That's why I've been such a strong proponent. And in our budget in 2023, we added eight additional 
treatment courts here in the state of Montana where federal money was expiring. Two of those eight courts are in Yellowstone County's 13th Judicial District. While Judge Nicely appreciates a day to recognize all the hard work being done to make these treatment courts successful, she says it's the people on the other side of the bench who keep driving the mission forward. When you see how um, these courts are able to change lives and then pass that on, that's why I'm interested in doing it. These courts and the model works. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Tonight, we're getting a better look at where inflation stands as the April Consumer Price Index is released. The rate was up 4.9%, which is just a little bit less than that 5% economic analysts were predicting. But it's still a long way from the 2% target the Federal Reserve is aiming for. Housing costs are up 4%, more than 8% from last year. And when it comes to wages, the average worker saw earnings rise by point to one percent. However, pay is still down compared than to a year ago. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, Billing Central students will soon get a taste of Hollywood. We'll explain next and later carrying the torch. We'll head to Forsyth and take you inside a special Olympics tradition. Keep it here.